what's up? I just, you want to just sit around and listen to music all night? I just want to listen to music all night. Oh, ladies and gents, it's good to be back. Thankfully, the wait is never long. Never long, and here we are enjoying each other's presence already on a Tuesday night in early November. It's uh, November 7th, 2023, and we've got a nice little show tonight. It's going to be a little bit longer than I thought it was going to be, because there's a delay with the band, the band's arrival, and I'm going to uh, spend that time taking a little bit more of your calls, and there's other things going on, but we have a great... uh, uh, visit a call via Zoom with Marley Hornick of New York Citizens Audit. She was here in June. I put the link to her past episode because what we covered in June when she was in studio was staggering. It was really, really staggering stuff. And a lot has happened since then. I have a little bit over here an article from September uh, where Marley and New York Citizens Audit got in trouble with uh, the the sterling New York State Attorney General that, of course, is waging war on Donald Trump in New York City right now. Um, it, it's a full frontal attack on anybody who casts any kind of aspersions on the joke that our, our uh, elections are. And I can't wait to bring that up with Marley because it has to be some of the, the big updates, this confrontation as we get closer and closer to D-year it's not even D-Day. 2024 is like D-Year. Uh, so that's that's what we have tonight. We'll be talking to her in a little bit. In the meantime, it's just you and I, and we're going to uh, kick around a couple of articles over here. I think that are are pretty good to start off with. And then in the second half, uh, we'll take your super chats, a couple of your calls, and everything else. And, uh, and I also would like to tell you, as I was just listening to a little bit of um, TJ O'Neill featuring stick figure it's called the song you were just listening to is called railroad railroad shelter um i have added at least a dozen more great songs new and old to the quite frankly mixtape on spotify which you can find on the on demand section on quite frankly tv that website is really the place where you should be spending all of your quite frankly intimate time there's a great, great uh, video stream that you can watch there. With all the live stuff and all of the after hours and weekends and bonus programming. Uh, chat room right there and then the links to everywhere else. Everywhere else. And the on-demand is great. And that is, uh, I think we got over 300, well over 300 songs now on that mixtape. Many of those songs have been on the show before. And many of those songs have never been on the show but will be. Once we start doing the second half exclusively on Pilled.net, which is also included right there embedded on QuiteFrankly.tv. So a lot more more leeway, a lot more wiggle room, a lot more relaxed nature coming our way. All right, so let's just jump right into it. First, I want to thank my sponsors, BlueMonsterPrep.com. Thank you so much for being out there, my friends. The world is becoming more and more crazy, but uh, that's one call I know I can always make and somebody's going to pick up with some good answers and some good vibes. That's right. Pat and Gina, they can help you out planning, plotting all your preparedness needs and they're going to do it with some just good humor and um, that's it. They become friends over the course of one phone call, which can be as short or as long as you'd like. They're, oh, they're never rushing you off the phone. Wonderful. BlueMonsterPrep.com, use promo code FRANKLY, and uh, get all of your shipping taken off the top. All right, going over to our grab bag. First one up from the New York Post. Shark at the zoo in Chicago. There's a shark in Chicago who was given birth without ever having made contact with a male. Did you just hear what I said? She don't need no man. A shark in Chicago Zoo has made history giving birth despite having no contact with any males. I don't work with the males because I used to be one. The female Ippolette shark 
lives in a habitat of her own at the Brookfield Zoo, located outside Chicago, where she's lived since 2019. She hasn't been housed uh, with a male since her arrival, according to a press release from the zoo. Well, I guess just being in the Chicago water is enough to change anybody from one sex to the other. On August 23rd, one of the mom's eggs hatched into a pup. Only the second recorded case of an Ippolette shark pup produced by asexual reproduction at an association of zoos and aquariums accredited facility. You may laugh now, but 2,000 years from now, when the new shark messiah religion is the dominant faction, religious faction on the planet, it is you who will be seen as the fool. Okay? That's right. 2,000 years from now, the, the dominant religion will be based on uh, some shark messianic lore that started right here that we all skimmed by on air in 2023. Over to Disney, this, of course, um, I don't know if this needs to be recorded and people just need to know exactly how bad it got or Maybe it's just better that it's all forgotten. Disney theme park guests. This is from uh, uh, silenceofthetimes.com.net. Disney theme park guests are now pooping while waiting online for rides. That's right. And it's not like a one-off. It's not a one-off. When you got to go, you got to go. Even if you're online for hours at a Disney theme park, riders at Disneyland and Disney World have been defecating while standing in line, according to witnesses who reported the grotesque site on social media. Here's a quote. I am in the queue for Rise of the Resistance at, uh, at Disney World. I guess it's a Star Wars ride. Someone let their kid take a dump on the floor, and then they just walked out and left it. WTF one wrote uh, one poster on Reddit. The post was cited by the news page SFGate, which, of course, SFGate is where we get most of our San Francisco news, and 90% of their website is reporting on defecation in their streets. Like SF Gate, you can't get in there unless you have extensive defecation reporting under your belt because that is the only news coming out of San Francisco. So of course they gravitated toward this. I'll go, oh shit, oh, if it's a shit story, it's ours. Disney guests can wait online for Rise of Resistance, the Star Wars theme attraction for more than an hour and a half according to the Q Times website hour and a half i feel like we've done lines like that in the past and then we started getting all the speedy uh the speed passes and you think you're doing something and then everybody starts getting the speed passes and then suddenly you're online the speed pass line for an hour and a half another redditor who claims to have worked near the ride confirmed the claim writing for the skeptics this actually happened fun fact this was one of three shit related incidents at rise today Less fun fact, I was there for all three of them, the poster wrote. A Reddit poster who claimed to have worked at Disney in Orlando, Florida, described guests leaving their bodily waste on the premises. Bodily fluids no longer bother me after working at Disney, they wrote. I'm sure. Let's just say that the attraction I work at has what the cast ended up dubbing the poop hall because the amount of times guests have gone in there and just pooped. We even put up a camera and it didn't stop it. The claim was seconded by another Disney cast member, a reference for the the, the company's theme park employees. Wow, good lord, the poop hallway. What's happening? What is happening? It's just, it's so much. We talk about it all the time. We, We, sometimes we talk about subjects and I just open up the lines and I gauge how everybody's feeling. And I know, oh, you know, feelings and this and that, but listen, Feelings are very important. You need to be able to reach out, stretch out with your feelings and be able to just kind of sink in and read the energies that are that are, are coming in and that are, that are leaving you as well. What is going on? What is this this unseen link, this communication that is always happening? It's a it's a it's a chatter that can be unconscious if you're not paying attention to it. There is something wrong with everybody. It's so bad. It's so bad. The communication breakdowns. I mean, what? What is? Is every is every planet in retrograde right now? For the last five years, the communication is horrendous. Horrendous. People are just checking out left and right. 
I don't know. Then the, the pooping stories. I mean, you know the lack, the lack of care you need to have to just pull off to the side of an amusement park ride and pinch a loaf right there. You know what, what, what that takes, what you, what you need to be lacking to be able to pull that off and for it to be happening multiple times a day at the same ride? My gosh. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, here's one for you. This one is, I guess, a little bit... This, this is a little exciting over here. From the Daily Mail. San Jose shipwreck to be dubbed the Holy Grail to be exhumed off the Columbia, off of Columbia with uh, $20 billion in sunken treasure. So Columbia declares the wreck will be raised before President Gustavo Petro's uh, term of office ends in 2026. Around 200 tons of gold, silver, and emeralds are thought to be on board the legendary Spanish flagship, which sunk during a skirmish with the British in 1708. Oh, can you imagine losing all that? But Colombia faces competing claims from Spain, Bolivia, and a U.S. company which claims it found it first. I love treasure hunting stories. And I want anybody out there who is a bona fide treasure hunter to get in touch with me. Seriously, get in touch with me. I love it. Especially when it comes to Caribbean uh, shipwrecks. Because a lot of those shipwrecks are not very deep. Uh, most of them are accessible by way of just scuba diving. And I have been reading about gold bars and how the Caribbean, the, 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 the floors of the Caribbean are just littered with emeralds and bullion and so much. I love stories like this. $20 billion, though, 200 tons of gold, silver, emeralds are thought to be on board the legendary Spanish flagship. So... That's, uh, I can't wait to see what happens with this one. They said that's going to happen between now and 2026. The San Jose was a 62-gun galleon that went down on June 8th, 1708 with 600 people on board. Very interesting. I'm serious about that. If you are a treasure hunter, let me know. Even if you just are, you, you do the metal detecting and you... You go to specific places because you know that certain kinds of artifacts were being left behind and you, you look for treasure. I, I, don't, I don't care if it's one piece or if you're looking for entire chests. Uh, get in touch with me. Here's another thing. I'm sure you heard about the, um, the grenade. They don't know if it's an assassination or something. But I think one of uh, you know, they, it's out there in, in Ukraine. People are getting blown up with with uh, I think their military commanders, whether it's in fighting inside of the country or not. They don't know if Zelensky is behind it. There's a lot of theories with that whole grenade assassination or grenade death with one of those military commanders in Ukraine that was reported on today. But this was just yesterday. Zelensky. The man that everybody loves, the, he's, the, uh, he's the steward of democracy. He's the only one holding back the Russians from taking over the entire planet. Well, yesterday it was reported that Zelensky says it's not the right time for elections in Ukraine. This is the kind of thing that someone is building up the courage to say finally here in the U.S. at some point. Ukrainian President Zelensky said in a Monday address that it is not the right time for elections in Ukraine as the end of his five-year term approaches. Zelensky argued in his Monday video address that Ukraine should not have to deal with elections as it continues to attempt to fend off Russia, which invaded Ukraine in February of 2022. This is from Yahoo, of course. Remember that. He previously had not ruled out Ukraine holding a presidential contest next year. Though uh, elections are currently suspended in the country under martial law, yes, and it also is illegal for you to be an opposition party member. And um, he's doing his best Abraham Lincoln impersonation with, uh, with the way that he's come down on media as well. But it's getting worse and worse for this guy. Because this is what he said on NBC, I believe, last night. It's a clip that has been widely circulated, and I went to go find the larger clip to see it. It, to, just to make sure that it's real, and it is real. And you're getting all the context that you need. 
because he's just, this guy is, well, take a listen to it. If you Hold on. Wait a second. Let me make sure that the, uh, here we go. He's begging for money. If you can't give us, can't give us some financial support, okay, okay, please give us a credit and we will give you back money after the war. If you, so he's saying, give us money, please. And if you can't give us money, give us credit and we'll pay you back later. I, I mean, if this- you can't give us, can't give us some financial support, okay, okay, please give us a credit. And we will give you back money. Does he understand that everything he has gotten is on credit? Does he understand that everything is credit? That what they're stealing from us with, with the taxes that they charge us, with, with they, the way that they take our income and the fruits of our labor, does he understand that most of that really just goes to servicing the interest on the debt? Someone should tell him how things work over here because it's the way that work, it works all over the place. That system's coming down, and he doesn't know. Oh, maybe he does. You see, he's taking on at this point um, Maury Kessler kind of vibes now from Goodfellas. Maury's the wig guy, the wigs that don't come off. And um, he's the odd man out, Maury. He's the odd man out, but he wants his money. And Maury pretty much spent the entire movie that he was alive talking Jimmy Conway into killing him. Because he just would not stop bugging him for money, bugging him, where's my money, believing that he was in some crazy way indispensable and and wouldn't be dealt with. Zelensky, in my opinion, is approaching a very critical point in the timeline of his usefulness, okay? He better watch out for that ice pick. Very critical point at this, at this juncture. And uh, with, with this going on, the way that he is just abandoning any kind of decorum and he's lost all of his, like it's, I, I don't know, it's like a, like a one-hit wonder that just wants everybody to still want that same song over and over again, but they're not, they're not buying into it anymore. Uh, uh, this, along with all of his so-called advisors who are talking to Time Magazine about the state of his delusion, uh, I would resign and go on a vacation for a few years. I would get the hell out of Dodge. I, I yeah, Listen, that doesn't mean that something's in, imminent. I don't know if he gets wise to it, if he looks himself in the mirror and realizes what kind of danger he's in at this point. But um, he better stop asking for money. <laughs> he just better stop asking for money. All right. Well, we've got uh, Marley Hornick coming on with us on the other side of the opening, so don't go anywhere. It's going to be a good one. Hey, guys, I've been looking all over for you, Jimmy. Henry, how are you? Merry Christmas. Hey, listen, I need the money. Hey, Maury, relax. Relax, okay? Jimmy, I need the money. Relax, relax. I'm relaxing. I need the money. I did what I had to do. I need the money. That's nice, Maury. Listen, I did my caper. He owes me. I mean, everybody's flashing their stuff here. Evidently, they got their money. Look at I'm wearing the same old shit. They're wearing it. I got to talk to you. Jimmy. 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 Oh, listen, I got 500 grand coming to me. It's the biggest fucking bundle I've ever made in this life. Maury, I'll go talk to him. I'll go talk to him. Go have a drink, all right? poison in my eyes. I'll talk to him. Poison in my eyes. One ant stand up to us, then they all might stand up. Those puny little ants outnumber us a hundred to one. And if they ever figure that out, there goes our way of life. It's not about food. It's about keeping those ants in line. That's why we're going back. Does anybody else want to stay? Let's ride!
You know, speaking of uh, Goodfellas and Henry Hill, I don't know. I don't know if uh, if King would ever show you guys, but King, uh, I don't know where Henry Hill was. He was on somebody's radio show, and King got through. And completely tore. He can't stand Henry Hill, and he tore into. He he was. It was brutal. I remember back in the day, he was like, "Yo, hey, Frankie, listen to this. Listen to this. I got him. Sent me a link. This is probably like 2000, 2009 or ten or something. He was selling his art somewhere, and uh, and King finally got to him. Can't stand Henry Hill, and uh, he went after him." Probably, probably could imagine, right? Maybe one day I'll find that. I'll ask him. Say, King, you, do you mind if we air that after the show? <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> oh, geez. Anyway, well, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. We are here on the flip side of the opening, and I'm just going to... I'm going to jump right into this and bring Marley in because I see her over there. Now, um, Marley, as you all know, she's our return guest uh, acting as sort of an election night correspondent this evening, she started New York Citizens Audit and spent an amazing night with us back in June talking about her dedication, the time she dedicated to getting the true scope of how illegitimate elections in New York may be. Uh, so, so dangerous that it's not even really that dire of a threat just for New York citizens is actually a national security threat because the issues that were found in New York are so pervasive and they could definitely be found throughout the country regardless of red blue state status and trends and and that's it so Marley's work has inspired a lot of similar startups to go and do the same thing in their respective states and she's here with us again tonight Marley do you hear me oh you, you hear me uh yeah good but it feels like my microphone is Oh, she just muted herself. We heard you. I, I just, I think I just unmuted. Is that better? You're good. Okay. You're, you're good. It's great to have you back. Yes. Thank you so much for having me on again, Frank. It's good to see you. I'll, I, I have to say, uh, Marley, I, I voted tonight, but the entire time that I was filling in all of my, my uh, circles and all that stuff, I couldn't help but think about your visit here in June, wondering about the litany of ways that my ballot just may be negated down the line. And, you know, whatever. I, I think that's probably in the back of a lot of people's minds, but I sure couldn't shake uh, our last conversation. Well, I was hoping you were going to say that as you were voting, you were so happy knowing that New York Citizens Audit was going to be tracking everything regarding this election. Th that's and redeeming. And hopefully <laughs> gathering evidence, as we have been for two and a half years, so that your vote would count. <laughs> well, that, see, uh, thank you. This is why I'm so glad that I had you on to remind me of all of the bright side out there, that there's more civic involvement than ever before. And, I, you know, I was going to ask you, and I still would love to give you the floor and just let us know what's happened since June. Well, let's just do that. Tell us what's happened since June till September, and then we'll get into this Lohud article from September 22nd or so, where uh, you got some some really amazing press from the Attorney General uh, Attorney General's office itself. So yeah, how's, she's giving us a ton of coverage, right? It's Hallelujah. incredible. <laughs> Absolutely. So what's been going on since your appearance here in June? Well, I think probably the most significant um, undertaking of New York Citizens Audit since I came in June is that we did complete our report regarding New York's 2022 general election. It's entitled New York's 2022 election, the reign of error, apathy, incompetence, or malfeasance. And uh, the reason it's entitled that is because in the course of creating the report, we discovered over 5 million unique registration violations wow. inside of the New York State Voter Roll database. Wow. That we created individual reports on. Um, and you may or may not know, and that your listeners may or may not realize that um, false registration is a federal crime that's identified as one of the three kinds of election fraud by the Department of Justice in the Public Integrity Office. So finding 5.1 million violations of clear eligibility requirements, what we call black letter law, uh, that means settled law or obvious law, right? If you're supposed to have an address and you don't have one, that does not uh, equate to an eligible record. 
So we found these 5.1 million registration violations, and we also found uh, 730,000 unique votes in the 2022 general election that had been cast by registration records that don't meet the clear standard of eligibility to find under state law. Now, does that mean all 730,000 of them are crimes? No, but it does mean that you can't certify that election honestly. You can't say that the election was accurate when you have 730,000 votes cast by registrations that are either um, you know, illegal or ineligible under the law. Okay. So, that's that. So what we did with that information basically was we we submitted it once again to the Board of Elections, and they've been claiming for some time that uh, one of the problems with New York Citizens Audit is that no one has ever seen our data. So we corrected the misnomer and reminded them that we have no data. It's all their official records. It's the official State Board of Election records that New York Citizens Audit has um, investigated. We sent the whole pile to them and we gave them 10 days to respond because frankly, we've given them a lot of time to respond to other issues. And we gave them, we sent it through the Division of Election Law Enforcement and gave them 10 days. And uh, on the 10th day, the story that you have in LOHUD appeared in the media across New York State. We, we, right? gotta, we gotta read a little bit of this. The New York Attorney General's Office warned a self-described vote. I love it, even on the local level. They, are, it, it, they they write just as if they're writing to the national level with all of the uh, those little uh, those little jabs and the adjectives and everything. Uh, a self-described voting watchdog group that it may have broken the law after complaints emerged accusing the group's volunteers of impersonating government officials and intimidating voters. What, what were the claims there of in, impersonation and intimidation, Marley? What did that have to do with? Uh, well, they're they're claiming that they have had reports from, I think, 13 counties across New York State that people came to their door and accused them of having more than one voter registration record and committing crimes, accusing them of voter fraud. Um, it, it seems very difficult at a minimum to find these actual reports. Uh, we've used the freedom of information law in all of the claimed counties to look for the reports and we haven't actually been able to turn up any r reports of, of people calling in with these kind of complaints. So it's unclear whether or not this ever even happened, but they, you know, basically they started out with this campaign, you know, statewide, oh, be very afraid, be very afraid, election imposters coming to your door soon to accuse you of crimes and intimidate you by accusing you of crimes. And and then all of a sudden, a couple of weeks later, it turns out, oops, it really was. It was New York Citizens Audit and we have the proof, but we're not gonna show you and we're not gonna specify. We're just gonna uh, you know, make allegations in the media and demand, basically they ran a discovery campaign through the media as if we were already in litigation uh, using the same KKK provision that was used against uh, canvassers in Colorado and Arizona. So basically, um, well, this is a shot across the we're, we're racists, right? We're racist, oh, of course. We're voter intimidators, we're everything. We're Ab terrible people. Absolutely. And you know, and, and we can see how the, um, the, the office of the attorney general is hard at work in New York city right now with, uh, president Trump. So you, you, to, to see this office, what it's willing to do to win one for the home team, which is they're not actually, they don't care about home. They're working for national and international organizations, and they want to be able to make sure that people, no matter who who they're voting for, are uh, there's never any going to be any kind of a, uh, a, a problem in them retaining power through these shoddy systems. And for them to say this, and say they could have been, you know, breaking the law. That sounds like a shot across the bow to me because they've already shown a willingness to do literally anything to uh, to play the game as dirty as possible. Yeah, well, it may well be actual voter intimidation because without providing any evidence of any kind of actual complaint, uh, they're making allegations and publishing them. And you mentioned using uh, tag words that would have national appeal. Well, they sent this press release um, 
And this appeared in, in San Diego, it appeared in Arizona, it appeared in New Mexico, it appeared across the country, this particular press release. So there's no question that the message that you should not question the government under any circumstances is clearly being communicated. Now, Letitia James has a, a slight problem and she may have to end up recusing herself from the matter if the if the attorney general's office in New York pursues this further because while we found 730,000 votes in the 2022 election that appear to be from ineligible registrants uh, under their own laws, her margin of victory was 537,000 votes, which would seem like a sweeping landslide. However, it is <laughs> nearly 200,000 votes less than those that we've already discovered to be in question. And in addition, in the 2022 election, there were 35,000 votes um, counted in excess of the number of voters who voted. So that means there's 35,000 votes that no one has any idea how they got into the system. So yeah. that's a big problem, actually. You know, the, the accuracy requirements for federal elections for the tabulator machines. Now, this, this is supposed to apply specifically to the tabulator machines that they're not allowed to read more than one in 125,000 ballots in error. Of course, the reason that it only applies to the tabulator machines is because there is clear federal law, the, the National Voter Registration Act, that says the purpose of the act is to maintain accurate voter rolls. So the assumption uh, when you apply an accuracy rate to a machine, the assumption is that the voter rolls are so clean that every single ballot that's been mailed out or granted to a voter has gone to someone who is provably eligible and a legitimate qualified voter. So the tabulators don't have to make a judgment between whether or not the ballot is valid. They just have to count it correctly, right? Scan it correctly. Mm -hmm. So with a one in 125,000 ballot error rate, in that election, they were allowed 48 out, 48 errors, I'm sorry, 48 ballots in error statewide before the election is required to be investigated because there were federal candidates on the ballot. So we found 730,000 errors, which is, I would say, significantly in excess of yeah. the legal standard. Absolutely. And did, now, did you ever receive, because I read in that article that um, you learned of the cease and desist through press inquiry, and you actually never re uh, received a letter. Did ha since this uh, publishing of this in uh, September, did you re receive that cease and desist? We did. We received the official letter, yes. It was a, um, a badge of honor, actually, because it was personally addressed to me. Yeah. And I was like, wow, I get to be public enemy number two, you know, gosh, I felt like I was in really great company. I must be, uh, you know, a tremendous American if I'm uh, just one down from Donald Trump in terms of danger to New York State's political ruling class, right? Yeah, and, and that's what it's really all about. They they want everybody associated with, uh, in Trump's case, obviously you are one person who is who was inspired to try to, to do something to make life in your home state a, a little bit more, you know, secure, because this is a, a big security issue. But uh, you can tell that the, the big thing here is that they want to make sure that anybody who even whispers anything that sniffs of the vote, the, the elections are far from secure, um, th that they are silenced in the most severe of ways i even see how they they tried to go at you personally only the only thing that they were able to say here is that that you also rail on your, your website you rail against a host of social issues including the quote transformation of our bountiful farmland into soy fields obviously if you rail against soy marley you have really stepped on the biggest of bear traps Apparently, tofu is a, like the holy grail. I have no idea. <laughs> Don't touch it. Um, I, I want to say, though, I'm not one person. You know, New York Citizens Audit is over 2,000 volunteers in the in the two and a half years since we began. And now I am also uh, heading up a national organization, United Sovereign Americans. And I do want to share a little bit about this with your listeners because it's it's super important the way that we've structured our claims in New York and we are preparing for litigation and we anticipate uh, filing litigation very soon. Uh, if not, uh, let's 
perhaps before 2024 begins, but shortly thereafter. But we're not only preparing to file in New York State, we are right now preparing. I was just in Dallas over the weekend. We had 20 states there, and we have about 15 states that are right now preparing their claims wow. using the same same method. So using the official data from the state election officials to demonstrate material errors in the registrations and in the votes themselves that invalidate the certifications. Now, does that mean we're going and we're saying these certifications have to be undone? No, actually, what we wanna do is follow the law because somebody in this country is gonna have to follow the law one of these days and one it might day. as well be us, right? Mm -hmm. The law says if your civil right to a valid, accurate, fairly counted election where your vote, the, the weight and value of your vote has not been diluted or distorted by fraud. If that is violated, if it has been violated or it is about to be or potentially going to be violated, the remedy that the law prescribes is to file a TRO, a temporary restraining order against any further potential harm against your fundamental civil right to accurately counted vote. So what we're setting up in state after state after state, and like I said, right now we have 15 states setting up their data this way, and we were happy to work with all 50 states. Uh, what we're setting up is claims that we're gonna be filing in federal court across this country in far in advance of the 2024 election, asserting that when act provably inaccurate and provably legally non-compliant elections have been certified, our civil rights to a government that serves according to our will, right? Government by consent, the fundamental principle of America, that that has been violated and that we demand that in the 2024 general election, they follow the law. They must obey the law. And if they can't obey the law, then we have to come up with a remedy that is equitable under the law. It is a, it's a it's a civil equity issue. So before we so, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I just wanted to say so I'm just extremely excited because at the conference in Dallas, you know, the election validity scorecard that United Sovereign Americans is using was you know, we had we saw the Texas one, we saw the Ohio one, we saw Maryland, and uh, we saw Illinois. And I'll tell you, this is it's the same story across the country. When you sh when you can provably show that the the registration records, like for example in New York, that the New York State Voter Roll database is minimum 14% in error. The vote in 2022 was provably minimum 12% in error. Kathy Hochul's margin of victory was 5.7% of the vote. More than double. The system, the system cannot prove that she won. It's impossible. Uh, okay, well then the, the, my first question before I get to my, that that's uh, stemming from this, because I was going to ask you about intrastate partnerships and what was going on outside of New York. So what you're saying right now is so exciting. How can anybody in the uh, in the country right now, what's the best way for them to reach you from their respective states and offer up their services, their volunteer work, whatever? What's the best way that they can reach you? The website is uniteforfreedom.com. Unite number four freedom.com. And it's United Sovereign Americans. We are uniting as as a individual, beautiful, universal, created beings with our own individual sovereignty as granted by our founders. We are uniting to hold the line against any further theft against our nation. We do not comply. We do not want this system. <laughs> we want our freedom and we're working together. And if people have, uh, any kind of skill, uh, data analytics, uh, attorneys, paralegals, uh, project managers, all kinds of skills are needed. And if you don't have those skills, you can just come in and volunteer or chip in for the litigation because you just want to make sure this works. <laughs> 
That's called y- election validity, as we discussed in June. Yes, right? yes, not integrity. And, and and that whole notion of cleaning the voter rolls, I will never say it again. Uh, I, I remember a lot from last time. Seriously, you guys left the mark. So that is Unite, the number four, freedom.com. Very well put together site over here. I hope I, I hope that the, the team only begins to expand. So let me ask you two more big questions that I have. Um, Pennsylvania right now, this is a something that's getting around. I'm not really paying too much attention to it. I'm sure that there's shenanigans all over the place right now, uh, but in so many different forms. But the uh, there's a little bit of attention being paid to the machines, the voting machines that are supposedly sw- switching some votes in parts of Pennsylvania. This may just be the way it is now where the distrust of our system is so bad that there is a lot happening. There is a lot being witnessed, but there's also things that are just being you know, blown out of proportion. Maybe there's overcorrections in some places. And it, well, who the hell knows, Marley? But what is your thought on how big of a role electronic voting machines play in the ability to sway elections? Do you think that there is any safe way to apply electronic tabulation to election nights? Is, is it is it just I don't know? Is it uh, is it a red herring to take everybody's eyes away from what you are showing? It is on the record. I mean, what do you think about that? I would honestly say it's all of those things. Uh, It's a distraction and a diversion away from the fact that elections can be manipulated in other ways. It's also impossible to fully secure, although there are significant ways that it could be utilized to some degree of of accuracy or trustworthiness. I, I would give you the example of uh, JFK International Airport, right? Like if machines are so untrustworthy and so incapable of assisting humans in performing complex tasks with many, many incoming data streams, then maybe we should immediately cut off the power to JFK International Airport, right? Because think of all those people in all those planes at varying altitudes and varying wind speeds and and they have to get to their gates at certain times and they have to leave their gates at certain times and all those people who have to be orchestrated in and out of those planes in a timely fashion. I mean, just think of the incredible risk that we're putting all of them in by allowing machines to assist the air traffic controllers and the management of that system. And, you know, imagine those poor uh, TSA employees who are forced to, to verify people's identity using passports and real IDs all, all day long at those scanning machines. And and how come those particular scanning machines, by the way, never seem to malfunction during the day? How come only the machines that are operating in the single most important machine-driven operation in our entire country seem to always fail? Yeah. I mean, it's just the idea that the machines are the problem is, it, it's, it does distract us from the fact that the the Department of Justice identifies election fraud as having to do with uh, the 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 distribute the the, the count casting and counting of ballots, uh, the tabulation and certification of votes, and the registration of voters. Right. Mm-hmm. So we don't. And, you know, there's perfect examples taking place right now, right? We have Connecticut, we have Massachusetts, and uh, I think we had New Jersey recently, where all of a sudden actual election fraud, which has a long, rich history of successful prosecution in America, is being prosecuted, right? You're not allowed to cheat. And and the issue, again, the, the, the DOJ guidance is so clear. If you, you know, anyone in creation can can go to a, a search website and, and download the document called Federal Prosecution of Election Offenses from 2017, okay? This is not an ancient history document. You can read in there every federal statute regarding the prosecution of election fraud, which is what they call it. And you can read every Supreme Court decision going back to 1888 regarding the, the significance of keeping the, the the election of federal officials to an absolutely stringent standard because that is 
the first grand right, our right to choose our representatives is the right from which all other rights ensue. If the wrong people are in office, we may not be getting governed by laws we've consented to, yeah. and they have to be able to prove it to us. It's so true. This whole, the, the, the prosecution of election fraud all of a sudden in these Democrat versus Democrat cases, all of a sudden it's alive and well again, right? Oh yeah, and I I have to, I want to read that to you next, but you know to your point about the machines and and how it, everything plays a role, the way that I can see them going together, of course, is what you have been mapping out uh, to this audience, especially, but to with your your greater corpus of work, is showing how inside of a state like New York, the margin of error is created. And inside of that margin of error where you're talking about mil- hundreds of thousands to millions of opportunities to cobble together majorities in a, a multitude of ways, not just through electronic voting machines, but through certain types of, you know, ballot stuffing, you know, as long as they have a, an inflated amount of votes that are out there to manipulate. And it's not, as you said, stringent and really paired one to one to people who are inside of that state. Then, yeah, th- th- that's really what's going on here. We're we're seeing how the margin of error is created so that people like, um, you know, Kathy Hochul can slip through with, uh, you know, two to five percent of the vote when she might have lost by ten. You don't, you just don't even know. Um, but here and, is, and they don't know. They have no idea. They'll never be able to prove it to us. And that right there is where this uh, serious crime is taking place because they're attesting officially that they can prove it to us, that they checked everything, they looked at all the auditable records, and there's absolutely no question these elections are accurate and compliant with the law. And that's a lie. Yep. And here's here's um, Connecticut for you. To your point, this is one of the things I wanted to bring up tonight. Uh, This was breaking a few days ago. A Democrat judge in Connecticut has overturned the results of the mayoral primary election in Bridgeport and ordered a new election to be held after a bombshell video evidence of election fraud was found. Here's a quote. The volume of ballots so mishandled is such that it calls the result of the primary election into serious doubt and leaves the court unable to determine the legitimate result of the primary, Judge Clark wrote in his ruling, adding that the videos are shocking to the court and should be shocking to all parties. I guess all parties except the one that uh, invested in the extra effort that day. Uh, Judges across the country now have a case to go off of when ruling in future mail-in ballot fraud cases. So my question to you is, um, with the breaking of this, I know that's not the only state where this is happening, but with the breaking of this story, uh, is there any... Is there any angle that your team has already discussed uh, using in a New York-driven case? Well, there, there's the way that our evidence lines up. It doesn't particularly re- relate to any single method of voting. It just relates to the voting system and the fact that the voting system has become so inaccurate and the inaccuracies that we're talking about are exactly the inaccuracies that the law defines as fraud. So it's not our, it's like, you know, after 2020, a lot of Americans, we went from suspicion to accusation. Well, New York citizens audit and now United Sovereign Americans went from suspicion to proof. And the proof that we have been a claiming all along is that no one has any idea who actually won and they'll never be able to prove it to us. Now, why is that a civil rights abridgment? Uh, just to be clear, I mean, it's kind of obvious on its face, but let's just, why is an election required to be so stringently accurate? So let's say Frank is running for Senate and I'm running for Senate. We're both New Yorkers. So now we're adversaries. We're natural adversaries. I don't have to trust Frank and Frank doesn't have to trust me. And frankly, he would be stupid to trust me because I really want this job, right? And I'm willing to do anything to get this job. And uh, so how is it that Frank and Marley both trust the outcome of the election? And how is it that all of our voters across New York State voting for a senator end up trusting the outcome of the election? It's because the laws governing the administration of the election are so narrow 
They're so stringent and they require such intense accuracy. Like I said, in the 2022 election with the number of votes cast, they were allowed 48 errors statewide before they're required to investigate an, another additional error because the risk of fraud in a federal election is known and accepted and, and it's identified as, as a giant risk. Yeah. So, it so they have to unwaveringly follow the administrative procedure outlined under state and federal laws. And that's why Frank is happy at the end of the day. And that's why I'm especially happy at the end of the day, because I obviously beat him and I got the job. Yeah. Well, the, the other thing there to remember is that there this is it doesn't have to just be about one party's nominee against the other. We're talking about primaries. We're talking about yeah. Democrats screwing other Democrats, Republicans yeah. winning over other Republicans that are maybe, you know, a little bit more connected than the other guy. We're talking about actually within people who know that if you're going to compete, maybe you have to go and register as one party that you may not want to, but you want to be able to get seen. And uh, and and that's why a candidate who was a lot better off like we hear about all of the, the, the Republicans, like the Tea Party Republicans who were kind of like squelched out of existence in Arizona because of the John McCain types that were, you know, so well established and, and, and sabotaged them all. So that's not to, it's not even to say that all oh, Democrats are stealing from Republicans. It's just that good can't, people are not competing fairly. And we're talking about mob warfare here. And um, it's not right. and, and who gets who loses out is the actual voice and the intent of the voting public. And that's the problem. That's where the civil rights violation comes in. They act like, you know, uh, crows on a carcass or vultures on a carcass. That's what that's how they see us. We're the carcass. That's unacceptable. That is not the law in America. It is a massive civil rights abridgment. In fact, when a state election official certifies a provably inaccurate, provably non-compliant election with millions and millions of material violations of election law brazenly open in the official record that is required to be accurate, it is an abridgment of civil rights of literally the entire U.S. citizenry. Because if New York has sent the wrong representatives to Congress, there's only 435 people in the House of Representatives, and there's 100 people in the Senate. That is a massive abridgment of everyone's right because those people are temporarily granted the privilege to write the laws for the nation. Yep. It's wrong on such a deep level, and this is where United Sovereign Americans wants everybody to bear down all together. It's on this Achilles heel. They're not allowed to certify an inaccurate, non-compliant election and tell us that we have to accept this. They've got their boot on our throat and we are switching, that we're, we're, we're reversing those positions. We have to have our boot on their throat and say, prove it to us, that's our civil right. If you can't prove it to us, then you can't use this voting system in 2024. That's, and uh... we have the evidence. It's not suspicion and it's not accusation, it's evidence. And that's uniteforfreedom.com. And God willing, Marley, I know that this will not be the last time that we speak before next November. But um, now that we're exactly one year away, uh, I, I, I know what your high hopes are, your most realistic fears are for sure. But I think that even in the face of uh, defeat, it's so wonderful to hear what, how determined this um this operation is and how there are plans for everything and it's not going to stop and i hope that a lot of people volunteer and i'm definitely going to stay involved with whatever i can do over here um well, here's one more question for you in the lead up to 2024 have you considered on a state-to-state -state basis um putting together any kind of a uh, a candidate guide People who are out there who are running in certain states and certain districts, especially in New York, uh, people who are aligned with the New York, uh, the New York uh, Citizens Audit or anything like that, they are that know about these issues and will actually go into uh, election year campaigning um, as these issues as major parts of their platform. That's a great question. United Sovereign Americans approach involves creating publicly available documents that clearly describe 
election validity issues by, state by state in a, in a uniform manner. And that achieves a couple of things. So the, the four election validity questions that our election validity scorecards address, one, were the voter rolls accurate as required by the National Voter Registration Act? Two, were the votes counted from qualified or eligible voters as according to the United States Constitution? Three, did the number of votes counted equal the number of voters who voted? A, you know, just a baseline accounting check on your election. And four, was the number of errors uh, in excess of the legal standard? And so one of our goals with, with making these documents publicly available, once we have, I mean, we are extremely careful. The last thing we wanna do is publish something that's incorrect and create more inflammatory issues around voting. We wanna publish something that's absolutely accurate and truthful and clear and based on civil rights. It has nothing to do with party and nothing to do with candidates but we do want people across America to get a hold of these documents and get some clarity. Uh, again, election validity is our civil right. They have to be able to prove that the elections were accurate and compliant. So by making these documents available to all US citizens to look to, you know, to bring to candidates, to bring to elected officials, to bring to town representatives, county representatives, federal representatives, anybody that they want to bring to their neighbors and say, hey, you know, this is kind of a different way to look at our elections. It's not about any candidate. It's not about who won. It's about, can they show us absolutely that the, the laws we're being governed by right now are the ones we consented to? And so I think it's gonna become a huge issue, election validity in the 2024 elections across all, um, you know, across the ballot, up and down the ballot because I think this gives the American people finally a credible, real evidence-based way to say, we knew there was something wrong here and this proves it. This is potential fraud at a scale that calls into question the outcome of any of our elections. They may not be valid and here's the evidence to prove it. The system has more error than the margin of victory. That's a, you, you can't have that. Yep. And again, like I told you that, you know, the, the voter roll database in New York for the 2022 election had a minimum of a 14% error rate. The error rate that's allowable under law is 0.0000008%. That's the legal standard. Well, it's no more standard anymore. That's why yeah, it's a, well, yeah. But we have to go to court, you know, yeah. because again, okay, Letitia, you know, they blew off. So we gave them the 10 days, right? What did we do next with those 5 million violations and the, and the three quarters of a million vote violations? Well, we sent the exact same report we sent to the New York State Board of Elections. We sent it to the Department of Homeland Security, which oversees CISA. We sent it to the DOJ Public Integrity Office. We sent it to the FBI. And we sent it to the New York State Police Special Investigations Unit. Not because we expected them to do anything about it, but you know what? If they don't, guess who becomes a party to that civil rights violation? CISA, the Department of Justice, the FBI. If they refuse to investigate something that is beyond probable cause for a, a legitimate investigation, not that United, you know, not that what we've done is not legitimate, but of course, we're not, uh, you know, the the authority, right? Yeah. To be able to say, so we have to bring it to court, which, uh, as you know, now I we're we're doing that. We're like weeks away. It's the we have multiple attorneys working on writing these templates that can be used nationally because it's all federal court. But the point is, by putting all of these officials on notice about what we have, what we've found they all become a party to the civil rights violation. We plan to hold people accountable. I'm... And we've created the structure where it's their data, it's their law, it's our Supreme Court precedent since 1888, and it's their duty to investigate. And it's not about election outcomes. We're not litigating election outcomes here, folks. If it's a civil rights violation, guess who has standing? Every single one of us. 
Well, you uh, you really have done it. Um, you've done a lot of work, and uh, it, the fact that we are getting this kind of pushback now from the Attorney General is a great thing, and I'm looking forward to what comes next. And uh, keep in touch, Marley. Anything that I can do to pass things along, unite for freedom, the number four, freedom.com. Volunteer and get in touch with Marley because this is a much bigger thing than New York. It's all over the place, and you can be a part of it. Thanks again for everything, and please, uh, please keep feeding us information from the outside. Thanks so much, Frank. Have a great night. All right. Be well. There you go. There's Marley Hornick stopping by for a, uh, for a nice meeting. It's great to have her by again, and there's plenty to uh, pick at there. But again, you if you missed her first appearance here in June when she was in studio, you should really go and check out that link. It's in the description of this episode, and we've gotten into number. It's staggering numbers when she brings up the 5.1 million, the 700,000 plus. Um, the, the numbers that she rolls out in June are staggering. So you got to really you got to take a listen to that. All right. Well, since I'll be getting off sometime around 8:30 tonight, I'm going to take my my intermission a few minutes early. So let's do that right now. When we come back, it's going to be just you and me, you and me, some calls, some super chats, and whatever the hell else happens, and that'll be that. Don't go anywhere. Brb. It's intermission time, folks. Time out to press the like button. Thank you. Ladies and We'll, we'll be right back. Yeah, intermission. Quite frankly. 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 We all support quite frankly. Not quite. Quite frankly. Let's go, Brandon. Quite frankly. And Roma Italia. Quite frankly. You're going on Frank's show tonight? I want to get a Coke. Can I get a Coke? So everybody watch. Quite frankly. With Frank. Quite frankly, how dare you? All right, that's nice. Nice, nice, nice. Good to have Marley back on, and it's uh, I guess I get, to, I get to stay up a little bit later tonight. See what happened. Do we get results in New York? Do you guys re- get results, election results on election night still? Are the local elections different because are are people mailing in their ballots for local elections? I don't think so. Can they? I seriously don't even know if that's a thing. Around me. There's nobody ever. Uh, I, I mean, every once in a while, well, I'll, when I go to vote at my voting station, there's if I go earlier in the morning, and you know, there's a couple of people that are there before work or something like that. They're online, but I've never been out the door for a vote. Nothing like that. It's always a very lonely place. Very lonely. That's why they do cumulative voting in my town, where everybody gets six votes each for in-town elections. It's sick. So it makes it look like a few thousand people are voting out of which is sad enough in a place where there's officially 33,000 people officially 
Like I, I keep telling you, there's 40,000 more than that. But to know that every, all those votes can be divided by six, and that's what the real amount of people are, it, it's sad. It's sad. So there's nobody going on out here, but there's a whole lot of consent to be claimed, if you know what I mean. There's a lot of people who are eligible to vote. And then there are interested parties who just need a lead, who just need their number to be bigger than the person next to them. So it's a it's a joke. It's a real joke. Uh, let's go into the Super Chat. Stostube says, great guest tonight, Frank. What a wonderful excuse to drop some additional monetary support for the one and the only, quite frankly. I appreciate you, sir. I really do. And thank you to Esther G13 on Rumble. Rumble, she says... First time commenter, absolutely love your show, Frank. Esther, thank you. And make sure you email the show anytime. Quite frankly, podcast at gmail.com. Anytime you want to email the show, you should. You absolutely should. On pilled.net and or quite frankly.tv. It's all the same. Depends on where you're watching it. Either on pilled.net or on quite frankly TV, this is what has come in through the chat room. NJSF with a cookie. Robert Sarn, C Blanche, J Sem, Reggie V, Chai Possum, C Blanche again is the biggest fraud in history. Can we stand this time? Well, I don't know. I guess we'll see. And that's the whole thing. Talking with Marley is uh, is very soothing because she doesn't uh, she doesn't seem well, she's never intimated that, well, this next election, this is it. Now, we know how dire the straits are. But, but you know, um, th- the fact that win or lose, there's always something else to be done. I like that kind of, I like that, uh, that work ethic and I like that game plan. It's comforting to know that there's that kind of a plan out there. And it's also comforting to see how The operation is growing, and it has expanded beyond the borders of the state of New York. That's wonderful. Um, Let's see. NJSF says, only when the machines can be audited can you allow their use. Yeah. Well, I guess that's the the thing with all of them. You know, there's a guy there tonight, an older man. I go and I, I color in my circles, and I feed it through, and there's a guy standing there. Helps me feed it through the machine, and dee, 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 it spits it back twice. Have to turn it over. Resituating it. Finally goes through. I said, I said, does that mean I just got three votes? Three times around? He laughed a little bit, but, um, you know, who the hell's tabulating? Was that, if that guy, was that guy 30 years ago, would he have had to be sitting there all night uh, actually manually counting these things? Perhaps, perhaps I, that's what I remember. I remember people who are tabulating votes at, um, in town. They were just like the, uh, all the old ladies, the bingo night crowd, things like that. People you knew would never cheat and they still could do math. Dagny. Frank, love that you hosted Marley tonight. You always give us the best two hours of our day. Hugs to you and the fam. Thank you. Thank you. That's uh, Wendy Mahoney's sister. There you go. And C. Blanche says, least, least we save daylight. Godspeed all I got to roll out. What does that mean, We at least we save daylight? Did we... Um, Am I going nuts? I thought that last year Congress had passed some sort of a resolution about daylight savings time, that it's going to be frozen in one position or another. Did that pass? And if so, when does it take effect? Forgot all about that. Brewbark says watermarked ballots are in the news. Zoso Dude says, love this guest, Frank. God bless her and her and her constituents. Rockstar. Yeah. Just to know that when you turn on the television, you see that uh, that that big linebacker of a witch, Leticia James, with her casket legs, legs as big as coffins. Um, 
just know that she is she's she's on a mission obviously donald trump is the big ticket item and she's going to do everything she can within her power to you know kind of put her greasy face all over this chapter in our history but at the same time going after people like marley who are doing equally damaging work dangerous work you know, Donald Trump is a lightning rod character right there, and he's got a very, very big, um, very big network size, and when he says something, millions of people see it, no matter where he's saying it from, he attracts a lot of attention. And if he calls attention to a election that stinks like shit, that goes a long way in at least stirring the pot and getting people talking. Then you have someone like Marley who doesn't have nearly that much attention on her, but she is doing work that is getting noticed because it is work that can actually can actually uh, flip some switches. That's big. So that is why the same kind of power that is coming down on Donald Trump himself is starting to um, take Marley and her her volunteers and her partners very seriously. They're even resulting, uh, resorting to character assassination. Of course, the only character assassination they can dig up is her dis- her distaste of soy, which, man, oh, man. All right. All right, let's go. Uh, Brew Bark, thank you so much. It's also do thank you so much. Let's take a call from King. King, how are you? What's happening, baby? How you doing? You, did you hear me uh, mention you before? Well, that's kind of why I called. But first, I'd like to say, what a wonderful guest. Not only smart, but cute as hell. And I say that respectfully. Of course. Extremely cute. Of course. She's very cute and very smart. But um, it's a funny thing about that, that call you talked about, right? With Henry Hill. This was when Henry I was, you, were, you was my boss. Well, still are. And I was broadcasting on the, the Zadalza umbrella. And one of Howard Stern's guys, I won't say which one, because you're not going to find that call online. Right. Not even from him. I went to check his YouTube and everything. So I'm not going to mention his name because maybe he wants to distance himself from that phone call. But what I'd like to say is, like, he was checking out Zadalza, man. Not just me. One of Howard Stern's guys was checking all of us out. Back then, like you said, around 09, 010. So one of Howard's guys was not just checking out me. He was checking out you guys and shit like that. Hmm. So um, this guy contacted me, and he says, hey, listen, you know, I like you. You're a funny guy. You do this, you do that. He says, I have Henry Hill's phone number. I said, all right. He goes, would you be up for... If I call Henry Hill, I put you on with him. I pretend he's calling my show or I'm calling him to do an appearance on my show because this Howard guy did his own late night thing online like the rest of us did. And he goes, and then I just bring you on and you blindside him. I said, fuck yeah. So Frankie. Yeah. That phone call went on for over an hour. Of me and Henry Hill going back and forth. Really? And this guy edited edited it down to two and a half minutes. I was going to say, I, I feel like I've never listened to more than I, what it feels like five minutes of that. Well, Frankie, next time you and I get together, I'll go into the details. Because a lot can be taken out of context. Because this guy edited an hour and a half down to two and a half minutes. Which is still a good call. Oh, yeah. I'll send it to you. I'll give you complete ownership of it. You do with it what you want. I don't give a fuck no more. Jeez. I, I, I'll send it to you. I'll I, email it to you. I did not know. And it's yours. I did not know that that call. So wait, wait. You have you have the compilation or you have the whole hour? No, I just have what he posted on YouTube years ago. And Frankie, as years went on, I downloaded it off of YouTube with that app. Because I'm like, eventually this thing's going to disappear. Yeah. And I got to have this. So, no, he live streamed the whole hour and a half. 
but he didn't save the whole hour and a half. So what he did was he condensed the whole hour and a half down into like two and a half minutes and then posted that. But wait a second. So if he even still has that, Hour and a half? I'd like to know. Well, wait a second. I'd love to hear it again, and I'd love for you to hear it. The one, the, the, thing, just, the thing that gets me. If you think made, I destroyed that motherfucker in two and a half minutes, Frankie, but imagine that's, what I did to him in an hour and a half. That's what I'm asking. That's what I'm, I, I, can't, uh, I can't believe is that he stayed on the line and actually took that for, for that long. I, that's just usually somebody will just say, I, I'm, I'm not putting up with this. You know, at that at some point, 10 minutes in, you got to imagine that the host sets you up. It's an hour and a half. Well, you know what, though? As much as I hate the guy, I'll give him credit. He ha- he hung in there. He tried, but he was no match for me. <laughs> he was no match. But I'll give him credit for not being a bitch and just, like, walking away. Eventually, the host was like hung up on me and was, you know, and laughed it off and was like, ah, oh, Henry, I don't know what happened. Bah, 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 bah. Yeah. I don't know what went on there once the host saw that the call had run its course. So I'll give Hill credit. He didn't run away. He was no match for me, but he tried. He tried to hang in there. Wow. I did not. That that's news to me. I've known about that call for a long time, and I thought that that was uh, that was it. That you had your your five minutes with him, and well, man, oh man, not close to ninety, huh? Well, I, you got send, send me the other one. I, I like to just hear it again. Well, maybe maybe we'll do something with it, but I just want to hear it again because I I looked for it the other day and I couldn't find it anywhere. But other than that, thanks for the call, man. Yes, sir. All right, there you go. There's a little bit of backstory behind what I was saying with King's. Um, King's time on the phone with Henry Hill, the main character represented in in uh, in Goodfellas that Ray Liotta played. So that actually happened. King he actually had a couple of memorable. I think he had another call with. He had a call on a radio show with I think Patrice O'Neill. What, what was it? He's gotten onto a couple of radio shows and his his voice. I, I remember just stumbling upon him. I think I was watching a radio show that Patrice O'Neill was on. And I'm just listening to it because I just found, I stumbled upon it. And I just love Patrice O'Neill. So I'm listening to this thing go on. And all of a sudden they're taking calls and I hear a familiar voice. And I sent it to, to King. I said, what the hell? I didn't know about this. He said, oh, shit. I forgot about that. Just find King all over the, uh, all over the, the internet. Oh, what a time. What a time, what a time. Anyway, 914-200-0269. Go ahead and uh, and call in. I want to hear from you. We're going to be on for another uh, 10 minutes or so before the guys get here. Jimmy D says, Frank, my girlfriend and I just broke up. I couldn't take it anymore. It was for the best, but I need you to prescribe me a song. Okay. Okay. Well, my girlfriend and I broke up. Couldn't take it anymore. So that makes me think feel like he uh it wasn't a bad it wasn't a good situation and it was for the best. So that's good. So this was a good thing. And the bad thing was the actual relationship when it was being held together. So you can't go into like a sad breakup song. It's got to be something a little bit more releasing. The first thing you can do is you can play Almost Again by Strapping Young Lad. Strapping Young Lad, this is a little bit more of a heady song. Uh, if the breakup was, you know, necessary, but at the same time, it's just, uh, it's just a little bit messy. And uh, it, it's good that it's over, but, but time is passing. Almost Again. Strapping young lad. It's really good. It's really good. It's good. I would go check that one out because the drum work is amazing. Almost again. 
So that's uh, that's one thing I would say. But if I'm going, this one, oh, I remember the the very, I think one of the first breakups recovery songs that I can remember. Uh, it's I have to credit my mother for it, but uh, the the circle, red rubber ball, you have to go and listen to the circle. And let me get this up. Red rubber ball, the circle. This one, you know, I, I always tell you guys that when I was younger, lyrics, lyrics, lyrics. We'd be listening to CBS FM or whatever the hell it was, all the oldies. Mom, what does this song mean? Mom, what does this song mean? What is he saying there? What does that mean? So, you know, it got got to the point where my mother just got into a habit of just telling me what the song was about before I'd even ask. And this one... I remember her telling me specifically about, like um, among many others, but this is about a guy realizing that, uh, you know, okay, a relationship is over, but it's for the best. It's good. It's a great song. Never hear your name again, it's all the same to me. And I think it's gonna be alright. Yep, the worst is over now. The morning sun is shining like a red rubber ball. I love that. Oh man, it feels so good. And you know, it almost feels like you just like you you bro- it broke. It's something bad. You broke it and you threw it away, and you can just take that big breath again. You know, it still sucks. It still stings. Good. Stolen minutes of your time were all you had to give. Think it's gonna be all right. Yet yeah, the worst is over now. The morning sun is shining. You gotta, you, you gotta give this. You gotta give this song some love. You gotta give that song some love, man. I haven't thought about that song in so long. And the reason why it just popped up in my head is because for a long time, I never even, I never even got the, I never even got the visual of the sun, you know, that you're describing the sun, like a red rubber ball, just bouncing along and it's just, you know, whatever. I just kept thinking when I was really young, I just kept thinking about an actual red rubber ball and, um, and I, I don't know, you know, just distracted because you don't get any of the relationship stuff, you know, you don't get any of that, those references for still years after. But that's what I would say to Jimmy D out there. There's probably more. There's a lot more songs, but those are the first two that come to mind. Almost Again and Red Rubber Ball by The Circle. That's what I have for you tonight. All right. What else do we have? Nine one. Oh, I'm sorry. I put Frank and Jim Zell up. I thought I was putting up the the call, the line, general line, two zero 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 two six nine. I'm wondering why there's nobody calling in. I was helping out Jimmy over there, and uh, and then I never. <laughs> I said, "Oh, this will buy me some time to get some some calls coming in." Six Dad says Senate passed time zone thing, but the House reps did not. Oh. Okay, good, because I kind of like this going back and forth. To hell with everybody. All right, hello. Cole, you're on the air. Hey, Frank, how you doing, man? I'm doing all right. How you been? All right. So, Marley, awesome guest. Indeed. And uh, it sounds like that uh, ride over at Disney World was a real shitty ride. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> you know what I was starting to think about? It was, um, is this, I, I, it might have been Splashdown Mountain or, Spl- or Splash Mountain. Is that what it was called? Do you remember anything in Disney World? I've been there in 30 years. I, yeah, me, well, Splash Mountain Disney World. I think that's the one where there's like the, the bears all over the place. And that was one of those. I wouldn't be surprised if Splash Mountain is one of the places where people take a shit. Yeah, it sounds appropriately named. Yeah, Briar Rabbit. Yeah, Briar <laughs> Rabbit. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Anyway, go ahead. Pretty gross shit. 
<laughs> but anyway, man, I had talked to you before about Act My Tax. We've gone before the Board of Canvassers three times. We're going the fourth time this Friday. So we're trying to get on the ballot here in Michigan. We'd uh, love to have the uh, founder come on your show one of these days. Oh, that'd be great. That'd be great, especially, you know, uh, is this all in an effort to really get ready for next year? Or did you have some initiatives on the ballot? Um, or I, I don't know if you have Election Day right now. If uh, if you have it's anything for going next year, okay, it's for yeah, next year. Okay, got you. Right on. So I just thought I'd mention that, and uh, great shows off always. And I've checked out some of your music, man. You guys are excellent. Well, I'm glad you like it. I uh, the only thing that I I don't like is that we have a very very slow uh, you know workflow because you know the, obviously we're not looking to go on any any big tours, but I I want to be consistent even in a smaller a smaller level and I want to we have so many great ideas and I want to I want to give you guys more stuff because I want to keep reminding you all that I am a musician and this is what this is really uh it's really important to me and I'm glad that you enjoy it I really do I want to give you more of that that feeling there so be on the lookout and I'll I'll tell the guys tonight hey hop to boys let's do this yeah, you're blessed to have that. I'm a musician, too, and if you get older, like I'm almost 60, it's really hard to keep a band together or even get one formed. So, you know, having your brother there and being close, and uh, that's awesome. It's a total blessing, and uh, you're both very talented. Well, I, I appreciate it, my friend. And call in again and email me, too, about what's going on in Michigan. Don't Don't lose touch, okay? Definitely. I'll let you know after what happens Friday. All right. Be good. There he goes. Let's take another call. 701, you're on the air. Who dis? Hey, this is Mike in North Dakota. Hey, Mike. How you been? Good. How you doing, man? I'm all right. I'm just hanging around. No, I just, I'm up at work fracking up in North Dakota, and I just want to say, man, I love your questions. I love how insightful you are, and just want to give some props to you. Oh, thank you. Well, it, it, well, I mean, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but over the last couple of weeks, especially when we were doing all of our spooky programming and stuff like that, what's the kind of show that really gets you do you like that every night you don't know what we're going to be talking about it could be something what or do you do you like a specific kind of thing more than others i like it all i like that you have a good mix you know i love those old spooky stories man i used to work in a really haunted movie theater when i was a kid oh and so i'm like oh it just brings back tons of cool stories for me oh where, where, where do you where are you from i am from a little town in colorado up in the mountains a little town in Colorado and that is where the uh that's where the movie theater is yeah it was an old opera house so it turned into a movie theater and I ran the projector so it was like abandoned upstairs and like 400 feet downstairs and it was just crazy so when, when was the uh, when was the opera house built uh late 1800s if I remember right so depending on where you were there might be a good chance that Nikola Tesla had gone to that opera house for some entertainment during all the time he was in Colorado are you kidding me? I don't know. I mean, he's. I mean, that's where wow. some, some of his more prolific experiments were. He spent a lot of time in Colorado, and of course, you know, the late nineteenth century is he's. Uh, you know, he's really rocking and rolling at that point. So, I, I, I would look into that man. I should. I think the back part of it's been torn down these days. I, I left Colorado. It's almost embarrassing. I live in Missouri now. Bought my little forty acres and loving it. Well, forty acres. I would love. Yeah. I was. I was talking to friends. Uh, I was talking to friends over the weekend, and I said, "Hey, I, um, I'm serious, guys. We should. We should look into getting maybe 150 to 200 acres anywhere that is uh, that looks good that we can develop and just make our own little gated community. I don't want to call it a compound that has too much uh, has, has too much <laughs> d dark juju there, but still." That sounds great. Forty acres. Do you have any? Uh, do you have any water that runs through your property? Any fishable streams or even something a babbling brook? Yeah, I do. I have a little uh, stream and a spring, and it's not a fishable stream, but I did have a pond put in, and so I got that stocked with fish. Ah, uh, what kind of fish? Uh, some bluegill and uh, some catfish. I think it's a good mix. I had a hatchery do it, so they put a good mix in that would all kind of feed off each other. So do you now? Do you go and every once in a while do you go and fish and do you eat the things that are growing in your pond? I haven't eaten any yet. My boys like to go out and catch bluegill, but they're so easy to catch. We just kind of chuck them back in. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. All so, right. Yep. Anyway, come true, man. 
That sounds like it is. All the best to you, man, and uh, stay in touch and send me a picture of the pond uh, at quite frankly podcast at gmail.com. I will, man. I appreciate you. Keep doing the work, man. I appreciate it. All right. Later. I love open lines. You don't know what's coming through. I want to get, well, Nikki just asked, I wonder what he named the stream. Well, it's a pond. I got to ask him what he named the pond. It's probably like Ted's Pond. That's it. Bob's Road. All right. 914. 914-200-0269. We got a couple more minutes. I'm just gonna give them all to you. Cause I ain't got nothing else. I got this thread from Jim Jordan that mentions Tracy. I'm sure we'll talk about that tomorrow morning uh at the eight the eight thirty show on Uncover DC's Rumble channel. I'm sure we'll go through that. So I, I won't even touch it right now because Tracy's mentioned it and how is she not gonna bring it up tomorrow morning at the eight thirty show? So we'll talk about that. And uh, I'll have more more to discuss tomorrow. And I think that's it. You know, I had a... Um, just been trying to kind of process it. I had a, another another very close friend of mine die over the weekend. Uh, just really awful. We all love her a lot. And she loved Aurora. She... You know, my friend Linda... She actually died on the night before her son's wedding. And she was the one that helped me set up the P.O. box for the show. And before she went to go work for UPS, she was a short order cook uh, in town. And that was the only place that we would go on Sunday mornings and Saturday mornings to go and eat. And then when she left that place to go manage UPS store, we said, all right, well, no more eating that place. We're just going to go for getting our mail. Just so I can't say enough good things about this woman, and it's still so shocking because I don't know. I went there today just to see how the hell everything was going and still expect her to just be there. And I don't know. Uh, I don't know what else to say at the moment. But tomorrow, some services for her. Thursdays, there's more. And I'll think of something else. I'll think of something else to say. So this is a lot, a lot of weird, a lot of weirdness. Just feel a darkness, you know? And, and I know a lot of you guys and gals are going through stuff like that as well. But the abruptness sometimes of life can really shake you up. And that's just what we have to keep in mind. Here today, here today, gone tomorrow. And there's no real, there's no take, you, you just can't take anything back. It's just, it's just all written in stone. So I, um, I really appreciate coming here as usual to get some work done. And the people that we, uh, we field calls with, it was great to talk to Marley tonight, the people afterwards. It's great to even answer that, that, uh, that question about breakups for Jimmy in the chat room. I think that was his name. That was great to listen to some good music. Time marches on, friends. Well, we'll see you tomorrow night. Don't go too far because we've got Velez and V Gorilla from Rogue News coming on. It's going to be great. It's going to be a really wonderful time. That's, no, 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 that's Wednesday. That's Wednesday. Then Thursday, we have another great show. Friday, I'm off. And then Saturday, I go climb walls at Fenway Park. We'll see how that goes. My left arm is messed up right now. No dirty jokes, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a righty. I don't know what the hell's going on here. Maybe it's just that I'm 38 years old. Dare I say. But thank you, guys. Let me go into the chat to make sure I didn't miss anything in the uh, with the Super Chats. And I don't think I did. Wait. Wait. Wait a second. Hold the fort. No, I didn't miss anything there. Jay Britt says, cheers. I appreciate you. And, of course, that's all. Thanks, guys. Tomorrow's another day. Thank you for tonight. I'll catch you on the flip side. Quite frankly, it's filmed. <laughs>
for a live studio audience. And now, our super chatters, starting with Jay Britz on one hand and Stostube on the other. Thank you so much to our friends, our new friend Esther on Rumble, first time chatter tonight, and all of our wonderful friends that are there on quitefrankly.tv and pilled.net, where they're sending in those gold pills. Burying me in gold pills. I love it all. Thank you all so much. Also, on Rockfin, I got a tip from Jack Bamberger. That's it. Sends his love. Thank you so much for the tip, Jack. Tomorrow's another day. Get to quitefrankly.tv and chill out. Find something to watch. I see cat. You're a kitty cat? It's Han. Hello. I'm a kitty cat as well. <laughs>